In the previous episode, we arrived in Venice, the magnificent city of canals. After queuing for half an hour, and then found out that Basilica di San Marco, St. Mark's Basilica, would require a ticket to get in, I decided to do a complete visit of this church building that's closely associated with Venice's identity, both as a city today and as a thousand-year-old republic in the past. Basilica di San Marco's entrance ticket has a base price, which will allow you to just get in and see the church building. Depending on your interests, you can pay more to see more. I decided to see everything, so I paid as I enter each section that required extra payment. You immediately notice that this basilica is unlike any other Catholic cathedrals in Italy. It has a very distinct Eastern Orthodox style. Almost felt like the interior of Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, rather than, let's say, St. Peter's Basilica of Vatican. Okay, ready for history 101? During much of its existence, the Republic of Venice was a seafaring mercantilist powerhouse that dominated the trades between the East and the West. Unlike other European states at the time, Venetians were eager to engage in business activities with countries that were not predominantly Roman Catholic. Yes, including the Eastern Orthodox Christians and even Muslims. That is why you'll find architectures around Venice quite different from other Italian cities, especially outside of the Veneto region, because many of them were inspired by architecture styles of the East, like the ones found in modern-day Greece, Turkey, and the Middle East. At the time of the Basilica's construction, the eastern part of the Roman Empire that did not fall, also known as the Byzantine Empire, was the shining beacon of the Christian world during Europe's dark Middle Ages. Being the most sophisticated civilization in the Mediterranean region at the time, it was no surprise that the Venetians would borrow ideas from the grand architectures of Constantinople, the capital city of the Byzantine Empire, to build architectures that were meant to impress the rest of the world. So why did the Venetians build Basilica di San Marco? When the Venetian Republic grew and expanded, it became more than just a city-state, mostly famous for its merchants. To make Venice more relevant in a church-dominated medieval-era Europe, Venetians went to the poor city of Alexandria in Egypt, which was already under Muslim control, and took the remains of Mark the Evangelist back to Venice. There were several versions of this story, so I just gave you an idea of what happened, instead of going into details. With the relics of Mark, Venice and the church building that houses the relics, the very basilica you are seeing today, became a pilgrimage destination. In the center of the basilica, you find an altar. This is where the remains of Mark the Evangelist are kept. The area behind the altar requires extra admission to get in. I wasn't sure if it was going to be worthwhile, but I nonetheless paid and got in. It turned out to be Paladolo, an elegant decorative altarpiece made of gold and other delicate materials. This altarpiece was originally made by expert craftsmen in Constantinople, which was also known as La Città d'Olo, the Golden City. This work has seen several modifications in a span of 400 years or so, with many of the most impressive additions like precious gems and plaques of figures taking place in the 1200s. Was it a coincidence? How did Venice become so rich all of a sudden that they could afford these top-notch artisan works even considered priceless during that time? Just two years into the 1200s, Venice, already a powerful merchant state, 
was contracted by the Crusaders for preparing a fleet and transportation for the Fourth Crusade against Muslims who were in control of the Holy City of Jerusalem. Because the Crusaders were unable to pay Venice for the services, they were asked by Venice to attack Venice's rival, another Roman Catholic city-state in lieu of payment. After seeing Catholic Crusaders attacking another Christian state with almost no consequences, a Byzantine prince decided to recruit the Crusaders to help him in fighting for the throne of the Byzantine Empire. The prince promised to pay off all Crusader debts owed to the Venetians and give control of the Eastern Orthodox Church to the Roman Catholic Church. The coup d'etat was a success, but the newly crowned emperor got deposed and killed shortly afterwards due to uprisings against him in the very empire that he wanted to rule. Guess what? Now the Catholic Church's dream of controlling the Eastern Orthodox Church is all gone. And who's gonna pay Venetians all the debts? In 1204, the Crusaders and the Republic of Venice sacked Constantinople and looted the greatest European city at the time. Now you know where many of these priceless items on this elegant altarpiece came from. The Fourth Crusade was not about taking Jerusalem back from the Muslims, but rather an invasion and robbery of two Christian states. To access the Basilica's higher floors, you need to pay another admission in order to get there. You find the Museum of Basilica di San Marco. If you are curious about the mosaics, which are often more associated with the Byzantine Empire and the Eastern Orthodox Church, you can get up close and even touch the mosaics to see how the giant icons of figures like Jesus and Mary are composed of small pieces of squares. It was very impressive and amazing to see. Being in Italy, you know that when you need a quick break, there is always Io Cafe nearby. Here inside Basilica di San Marco, it is no exception. Don't think you'll just find mosaics in the museum section of Basilica di San Marco. You'll find some iconographies, again, more associated with the Eastern Orthodox Church rather than the Roman Catholic Church, and statues of four horses. These statues, known as the Horses of St. Mark, were looted from Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade. Believe it or not, Napoleon at one point even looted these statues from Venice, but later returned back following his defeat. These statues once stood on the facade of the basilica, but have been since replaced with replicas to better protect the original work which dated all the way back to the classical Greek era. Let's check out the replicas now, shall we?
actually the rooftop of Basilica di San Marco marks the end of our tour to this iconic building. I'm sorry, I was wrong. It wasn't free. It began with three euros and then the more you want to see, you had to pay more. So I paid three euros, plus five euros, plus seven euros, that's 15 euros total. But on the other end, I heard that you couldn't take pictures inside. But now with you paying the admission, actually you can. So you know what? I would trade in 15 euros for the opportunity to film and take pictures. My recommendation is Basilica di San Marco is well worth the time and the admission you pay. If you're not into Palladolo, the golden altarpiece, at least check out the upper floor museum where you get to see both the interior of this magnificent basilica and Piazza di San Marco from a bird's eye view. We will return to Piazza di San Marco the next morning when the square is less crowded. All thanks to my hotel's prime location. For now, let's get out of the bustling San Marco area and see what else Venice offers. Our Venice adventure continues as we escape the tourist crowd and venture into a beautiful neighborhood that's less visited. What will we see? Follow me to the next episode. <laughs>